Hello and welcome back to Access DNR. In this month's episode, we help reopen Annapolis' city dock, plant bay grasses to improve water quality, host hungry goats, and more. I'm Karis King with the latest news from the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. First up, we join forces with the Maryland Department of Agriculture to kick off a multi-year project that will restore hemlock populations lost to a small invasive beetle, the hemlock woolly adelgid. As part of the effort, members of the Maryland Conservation Corps planted more than 200 seedlings at Patapsco Valley State Park and will do the same at Cunningham Falls. The innovative project also includes creating a site to establish populations of tiny predatory beetles to combat the harmful pest. Up next, the docks surrounding Ego Alley in downtown Annapolis are officially open after nearly a year of repair. Secretary Belton joined city officials and project partners to celebrate the site's completion. The renovations were paid for by a $1.5 million federal grant secured by our boating services staff. And later, biologists with our Resource Assessment Service work with the Anne Arundel Community College Environmental Center to supplement populations of bay grasses on the Magathy River. Through the effort, multiple species of submerged aquatic vegetation were planted and will be monitored in the coming months. Also in the news, the Maryland Park Service put its newest batch of seasonal employees to work. As part of a pilot project to combat the spread of invasive plants, a small herd of eco goats were introduced to a quiet section of Sandy Point State Park. The goats were enclosed in a special fenced off area for several weeks, satisfying their appetites by feasting on plants that don't belong there. Later in the month, Sandy Point also served as the host site for the 7th Annual Youth Summit. Sponsored by the Maryland Association for Environmental and Outdoor Education, the annual event unites students from across the state to celebrate their green schools and provide them with new opportunities for natural connections. Looking forward, our Wildlife and Heritage Service will host several Junior Hunter Field Day events in the coming months. Through the free workshops, wildlife professionals share their knowledge, promoting conservation and safety while providing youth participants with hands-on, fun-filled activities. Last up, it's time to say goodbye. Next month, there will be a new face for the monthly video newsletter. It has been my pleasure to host these videos and I have enjoyed every moment of my time with the department. To my friends, colleagues, and viewers, I say farewell. Well, that's it for this month for the latest news. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook, subscribe to our magazine and newsletter, and download our mobile app. I'm Karis King. Thanks for joining us.